Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 11, Immunity. Now in this chapter, we have two parts. Part 1, the immune response. We talk about phagocytes and lymphocytes again and we talk about it in more detail. And in part 2, there's immunity, vaccination and autoimmunity. And actually, there's also a bit, little bit here about antibodies. Now without further ado, let's go into part 1, the immune response. Now before we talk about the immune response and the processes involved, let's talk about some definitions. Immunity, when we talk about immunity, is really protection against diseases. If I say that I have immunity against this disease, this means I'm protected against these diseases. The immune system, however, is the body's defense system. There are mechanisms in place, the cells in place, all together, defending the body against diseases. Now, as we continue this chapter, imagine it in your head like a war. Now, we, the body, are fighting a war continuously every single day against different pathogens. Your cells, your systems, they are sort of like little soldiers that are trying to protect your body against any infection. And like any war, there are different lines of defense. In a war, there's like the little soldiers um, that are on foot, usually in the front, and then the soldiers on the horses, and the soldiers with the machine guns, and maybe the tanks afterwards. Same idea, our body have different lines of defense as well. The first line of defense is external. This includes the saliva, the tears, skin, mucus, stomach acid, and these are all non-specific mechanisms which means they are not targeted towards a particular type of pathogen. They are just generally for majority of the pathogens, very general. It acts more of like a barrier between the outside environment and the internal environment. Second line of defense though is internal. So if the enemy pathogens make it past the first line of defense, they will encounter the second line of defense, which mostly involves phagocytes, and are also a non-specific immune response. If the pathogen survives that second line of defense, the third line of defense comes in, and this time it is a specific immune response. And this involves lymphocytes. What do we mean by specific? Specific means that the immune response is specially targeted at that particular few pathogens. Now, like in a war, there are many, many lines of defenses, there are many mechanisms, but they all work together. And the same idea here, both non-specific and specific defenses have slightly different functions, different way of working, but the aim is the same. They work together, they have teamwork, in order to protect the body against diseases. Now, there is one word that will keep popping up as we go along as well, and is this word called antigens. Now, there are two types, self and non-self. You might have heard these terms in chapter 4, we talked about how um, protein, glycoprotein and glycolipid can act as cell surface antigens. What does that mean? This means they are big molecules, macromolecules on the cell surface, and they, are, uh, they function to carry the identity of the cell okay so let's talk about this further what is non-self antigens first okay non-self antigens in bio is is defined as macromolecules that activates an immune response now this is not necessarily on a pathogen it could be on um, foreign surface material surface any foreign surface uh, such as allergens, dust. Some of you are allergic to dust and allergic to different things. It doesn't need to be a pathogen. Okay. It also can be your own cells which are infected by those pathogens. All these things have non-self antigens and can activate an immune response. What do we mean by activate an immune response? We mean that this stimulates the production of antibodies by your cells, okay? And uh, these antibodies will help defend your body against these macromolecules and these 
um, cells. Now, it's important to note that different pathogens have different um, antigens here. Some have one type per pathogen, some have multiple types per pathogen here. So, when your cells recognize non-self antigens, your cells actually can tell, especially in the specific mechanisms, which pathogen is coming in and what antigens are expressed on the surface. Now, the second type here is self-antigens, or what we also call cell marker. Now, these are macromolecules on the surface membranes of host cells, and these antigens do not trigger the immune system. That means no antibodies are produced, and there is no attack going on there. Note, when we say antigen in general though, we are always referring to a non-self antigen, usually. If it is self-antigen, we usually will explicitly say it. So don't be confused when we just say antigen in general, we really mean non-self antigen, yeah? Okay, so in light of that, let's define immune response again. Now, immune response is the body's immune reaction or processes that target non-cell antigens. Now, this involves white blood cells that are made in the bone marrow that you already know in chapter 8. There are two types, okay? Two major types, which are phagocytes, which are mostly non-specific as we saw just now. Uh, under phagocytes, there are neutrophils and monocytes which mature into macrophages. That is one type, one huge group. The second type is lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, we learned that they are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, and they are mostly involved in specific defense. The following sites will be a recap of chapter 8, but they are overlapping with chapter and so It's very, very important for you to understand this chapter. So we are going to go through it again, but I'm not going to highlight every single thing to you. Uh, I'm just going to highlight what is important for this chapter and important for what I'm going to say next. So again, there are two main types of white blood cells, phagocytes and lymphocytes, right? Phagocytes are produced throughout life. Their function is to patrol in tissues, in blood and organs, and remove dead cells and phago uh, pathogens. Now, it's called phagocytes because they are cells that undergo phagocytosis. They are involved in non-specific defense and response to many different non-self antigens. This is what non-specific defense means. It can respond to many different non-self antigens, not just one. Now, there are two types of phagocytes that we learned about. Neutrophils, monocytes, which then mature into macrophages. Now, neutrophils have uh, receptor proteins to identify pathogens as non-self okay and they tend to accumulate at the site of infection however it sort of dies after digesting those pathogens they don't continue to live on they just kill and then they they're like suicide bombers okay they just kill the pathogen and in the process kill themselves now phagocytes um, that are mono sites and macrophages works differently. Now they look different. They also have receptor proteins to identify pathogens as non-self but um, they are not short-lived. They are not suicide bombers. They actually start or initiate the immune response. So this is the specific role of macrophage here. This is not in chapter 8. This is new content. So let's go. So macrophages, they are not like neutrophils. They live longer, they um, also um, engulf the pathogens, but in the process, it starts the immune response and does this. Okay, so here we have a mechanism. Number one, yes, again, it has many receptor proteins on the cell surface. You cannot see here, but I'll show you it's there. It can detect non-self antigens. And it's non-specific, as we have learned. Now, like neutrophils, in general, they engulf the pathogen via phagocytosis. Okay, 
And in chapter 4, we, we know that after engulfment, membrane fuses, and after that phagocytic vacuole is formed, the phagocytic vacuole actually fuses with a lysosome. The hydrolytic enzymes in there um, cuts up those pathogens using lysozymes. Yeah. And that's seen here in 3 and 4. And what happens next is very interesting. Number 5, antigen is presented on the cell surface. It doesn't just destroy it and throw it away. It takes it and presents these antigens on the cell surface. These antigens are non-self antigens. These antigens are from the pathogen. It takes these antigens and presents it to other white blood cells. And therefore, we call this macrophage as antigen presenting cells or APC. They only exp they only present some antigens though. The other cell fragments are released by exocytosis. Um, yeah, and the APCs or antigen presenting cells go on and activate and stimulate lymphocytes. Not shown in this diagram. Now I know we're talking about macrophages here, but actually this process that we just talked about can include um, B cells and can include other phagocytes as well. Um, one that you won't see in our textbook, you won't see in my slides, but one that's in many videos is called dendritic cells. Dendritic, D-N-D-R-I-T-I-C. Now that's the site model. The, the point is, macrophages, they are longer lived, they cut the pathogen up and they present the antigens on its surface. And it starts off the immune response, right? So it starts it off by activating and stimulating the lymphocytes. Talking about lymphocytes, let's go even further. Let's talk about it even more. So lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow before birth. They are involved in specific immune response and only respond to specific non-self antigens if they if the receptor on the lymphocytes are not complementary to a particular non-self antigen, it will not be so-called activated. These lymphocytes circulate in the blood and lymph, and as we know from the name lymphocytes, it actually has a high concentration in lymph nodes, and actually it also accumulates at the sites of infection. Now its appearance it's different from neutrophils, different from macrophages, just so you know. Now, for lymphocytes, there are two types of cells. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes, they mature in the bone marrow, produce in the bone marrow and mature in the bone marrow. They're called the, B, the name B cells and they produce antibodies. The second type, T lymphocytes, are made in the bone marrow but mature in the thymus and do not produce antibodies. Now, this is actually a very, very summarized version of what actually is going on. Um, they actually have even more detail talking about lymphocytes and what they do. Let's see, let's talk about it more in the next video.